YouTube. What is going on? It's Solution for the Solution for Kicks. Back with another video. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, and tap the notification button so you know when I'm dropping another one of these things. And you too can be a part of the Mighty Four Kicks Brigade. Today's video is about the impact the coronavirus is having on the sneaker culture. And I'm gonna show you all something that's a verified incident that occurred here in San Antonio and what is it is done because it's a major retail venue where a lot of us shop at and get sneakers from. So, well, I'm gonna switch the camera around and you get to see. And I want you to kind of glean what you think has happened. And then I'm gonna tell you exactly what happened. So here we are at North Star Mall. I was just here Saturday, everyone. This is where I picked up my pine green black Jordan 1s. And this mall is never this empty, ever, never. However, it is open, okay? And I'm on the backside on the uh, far east end of the parking lot. Now, there are a few more cars um, towards the center of the mall for obvious reasons because, you know, we're Americans and we're fat and lazy. We don't like to walk too far. Now, people are showing up, and the time is 1.09 p.m. on Tuesday, March 3rd, 2020. So you get an idea. There's some people going in right there to Forever 21. <clears throat> and like I said, I'm on the back side of the mall. The front side of the mall doesn't have... Um, a lot of wide open parking. It's uh, mostly parking garage. But to my left, as you just see, um, there's really no one out there. You got uh, some um, repairmen off to the right. You have a couple of more vehicles right here. And um, we're here pretty much on the, the Macy's end almost. A few more vehicles. But yes, it's in the middle of the day. <clears throat> and I, I come and shop all the time during the middle of the day because I just have, you know, I don't have to deal with as many people. But even this garage over here to my left, your right as you view it on the screen, is somewhat, well, it's pretty empty considering. Because it's pretty close to a lot of the entrances in here. So this is the effect that a situation, well, I would say an incident occurred here um, a few days ago here in San Antonio. Now, why is this so significant? If you have been watching the news and you aren't sure what's going on with this and you're just terrified and everything, I'm gonna give you some technical insight on this because this was basically part of my job for 17 years when I was in the army. There are a lot of spaces in still considering because people go and eat lunch and it's still lunchtime for a lot of people. It's, it's very vacant. So you got a Cheesecake Factory and a Kona Grill. I think there's a California pizza or something down here. If it's still open. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's. Oh, y'all just going to have a conversation in the middle of the street. Okay. All right. Yeah, Urban Bricks. Normally there's people out here eating right here as well. But you know, in the middle of the day, I can seldom park right here and get a parking spot. So that this is this is crazy. So what happened? What happened? We're gonna get into that. We're gonna hold on to it until I walk you through the mall and see what's going on. Because this mall was actually closed yesterday. Okay, so we're here in the parking lot. Look at this, y'all. It is never like this during this time of day. There's always vehicles right here. Even though this is considered valley parking, people are lazy. They don't want to walk. So this parking lot right here, which is in the center of the mall, is all the way packed. It's always packed. Man. The center of the mall parking lot is always packed. You do have a few people trickling out, but normally it's droves of people going in and out of here. And uh, North Star Mall is essentially in the, the north central part of the city. It straddles 
Highway 281, which runs through the center of the city, and it's on the northern end of the 410 loop. And you got two major thoroughfares back into the city with San Pedro Avenue and um, McCullough Avenue. So a lot of people come here to shop. It's like probably the second busiest mall next to River Center Mall for obvious reasons because of tourism. But yeah, this incident really has scared people off. And um, I'm curious to what's going on. I'm really, really curious. So we're gonna get inside. The Bath and Body Works is closed over there. You guys see that? The gate's down. And uh, why is this mall so important? Oh, we're, we're gonna go to where it all started. Team store for the Cowboys, man. That's closed. It'll, it, they can't sell stuff anyway. So we're right here at ground zero where the incident occurred. So what happened was a lady that was quarantined at Lackland Air Force Base in a designated area on Lackland Air Force Base was released and um, she came here to eat in the food court. Okay, no harm, no foul with that. They said she was clear. However, it was confirmed that she actually still had the live virus and she was right here. Imagine the things that she touched, the people she might have came in contact with, just getting into this massive venue and the sheer number of people who come through here every day. So you got Foot Locker over here and you got Kids Foot Locker to the left. But right here, she sat right here and ate. I don't know where she ate, that's irrelevant. The mere fact was that she was here. And um, the story goes, they believe they made a mistake. So when you're dealing with something like this you do three levels of confirmation that's what we did three levels of confirmation okay because you don't want any false positives you know what that means all right so we're here yes these are here all right so one of the things that um people don't pay attention to if you look at a can of lysol it says effective against coronavirus so it's not new okay it's not new. It's just that strings occur, mutations occur. Now, what they believe, and this hasn't been confirmed, is that you have what's called species jumping. And what that means is that there's a virus that gets transmitted, transmitted between uh, animals and humans, if you will, to break it down simply. That's what happened, allegedly. Did I say allegedly because it's not confirmed. They're still doing what they need to do. Thanks, appreciate it. So look, everybody's hurting financially because of this. Okay, you got mall security putting out um, uh, notices and things like that. And I, I really believe um, a lot of stores made the decision to, you know, shutter their doors. All right, you got New York and Company right here. They're saying they remain closed sorry for the inconvenience i don't blame them people don't know enough you know it's, it's you're going to be inconvenienced okay that's just how it is that's how it is it's okay and uh some stores you know decided to open you know as you can see but a major store like bath and, <laughs> and body works they're closed all right, a man has his breathing apparatus right there, his Lysol and disinfectant and all that stuff. They're just wiping down things, okay? But like I said, it, <laughs> you better do your research because it's people walking around with masks, regular just filtration masks that does not filter the, uh, the microns at that level down low enough. So you're just being fashionable, in my opinion. I tell people you're being fashionably cautious. And I know some of these major sneaker stores aren't going to close. So Foot Locker's over. Of course, Foot Action is open. And Champs is open. And you saw the kids' Foot Locker. You know, they're still selling jewelry over here. But some of the kiosks are closed. 
You see right there, lids is open. But this is what happens when the media sends people into a spin. Now, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, okay? But it, it is kind of odd. All right? Like I said, foot action. They're open. You know, doing busy work. People still being paid. Macy's is still open. Champs. <clears throat> I'm telling you, even on at 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning, this place is still has a, a decent amount of people. So it makes you wonder, like, what do the employees that are here work? What do they think? But we're not going to ask anybody that. Okay. We're not actually going to that. But it's unique. It's really, really unique. And I'm telling you, the, the economy is taking a hit. Because of things like this. People are terrified. Look, like everyone's wiping stuff down. Things that they, <laughs> they didn't do daily, they're doing now. Stuff that they put at a, a minimum. Unless something happens or something, a spill or something like that. Normally just dust. And straight now, they, they're wiping everything down. Especially these high volume stores where they're having people stream in and out of it. And I only went through half of the mall. And you're seeing what's going on. So, you know, it, it makes you wonder about uh, some of these corporations. Either they, they're fully informed or <laughs> there might be a level of apathy. They don't care. Like, ah, whatever, it's not that bad. Go to work, make some money. But this is when you have to make a decision. The overhead that you're spending to keep your storefront open will exceed the profits that you possibly could make on a day like this. So that's what's going on here. Forever 21 is open. The Victoria's Secret is closed. And see, they can afford that, okay? The footprint is just bigger. Wow. And see, this is the thing, right? It's some of the, the businesses that when you come in direct contact with people, you probably want to think about that, okay? You probably want to think about that. Like, should you be doing this if you got to come in direct contact with people? So I'm going to dip into this finish line. So I just got finished talking to um, the staff in the store. Okay. And they say they had seven people coming in since they opened. Seven people. All right. So it is mind boggling. But like I said, um, if you're concerned, and one of your storefronts deal with the direct contact with the employee, well, between employee, you know, the potential consumer, then yeah, you might want to consider it's not the risk. You have items that are going to be touched quite a bit. You know, make that decision. You know, it's completely nothing wrong with that. Just keep it safe. You don't know, you don't know. And when you don't know, you, you lean towards the worst case scenario. That's what I tell you. The worst thing you could do is watch the news and watch one source. The moment you don't challenge the information that you're being uh, programmed to is the moment that you fall victim to the fear and panic. I said, now I'm not saying this about it because apparently, you know, clearly there's something going on. But you have to go to more sources to become better informed because the media works on sensationalism and fear and panic and you being ignorant. And their thing is, we're going to put you in the know because you're ignorant, but we're going to give you our slant. So that's what's going on here. So I'm going to head to the house now, and uh, I've gotten a good glimpse of uh, what I need to see from my own eyes. And, uh, you know, a couple of people have uh, asked me questions, uh, voiced their concern, you know, because they wonder what I was doing. And, you know, sometimes when you're, you're uh, vlogging, people listen in. You know, you can't help it. Humans are curious. They're nosy, if you will. They're like, what is he talking about? Why is he filming himself on his phone? I had my phone. I didn't bring up the camera. 
I think if I brought up my camera, it probably would have caused me some problems considering what's happening here. Happened, excuse me. Um, so, I could see that some people just went off what the news told them. And it's okay, then it's not okay. And people were saying, well, you know, why would you say something like that? That's how we get our information. Well, um, one thing I learned when I was in college for this was something called journalistic integrity. Meaning, you're supposed to tell the story from all angles, okay? And you tell it straight down the middle. It, the saying goes, I don't make the news, I just report it. However, in this day and time, the news gets tampered with from time to time. So what we have going on here is uh, the fear factor, if you will, for all puns intended. The fear factor from people watching the daily news, where they're here in San Antonio, the various outlets and venues, um, has caused people to go, oh, the whole building's in panic. You, you know how people go off the deep end. The building's infected. You can't go in there. As soon as you walk in, you're going to get sick and all this good stuff. And I told you how this works. But uh, hey, wash your hands. Um, if you're sick, stay home. Uh, no matter what your employer says, you know, they should not want you in the workplace. You know, if they're worth their weight and uh, how they feel about the employees, I know I wouldn't want you there. Wipe stuff down. Um, hand sanitizer is great, but you better wash your hands still because then you won't have uh, sanitizer goop all in your hands and stuff like that. Eventually it builds up. All the fragrance and all that eventually it builds up. It does hand sanitizer doesn't remove grime. I keep telling people it does not remove grime, it will kill some bacteria, but it, you know it's a level of protection, but it doesn't kill grime. And the, the whole uh face mask thing you're just looking like you're about to do somebody's nails if you have the wrong mask on. It has to be N95 rated or a self-contained breathing apparatus. And if you know what that is, I'm pretty sure you would not be wandering around in public with that on. But yeah, there it is.